Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how Microsoft finally fixed the performance difference between the 4 and the 4 each loop in C Sharp and this change is coming in .NET 7 However, it also looks like they broke something along the way, so let's take a closer look. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for my full length courses, check out nickchapsters.com. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple console application that is a .NET 6 application and doesn't really have anything. And I'm going to use that for benchmarks because this video will be benchmark heavy. We want to see what changed between the two versions. Now, for that reason, I'm going to add benchmarks.net into the mix because it's going to help me get some measurements. And I'm going to create a benchmarks class over here. I'm going to slap the memory diagnoser because I need to collect how much memory things allocate as well because that might be interesting. And first, we're going to start with iterating an array just to get an idea for how things are getting wired. So I have an array of integers over here. And when I run my benchmarks, it's going to be populated with 1000 random integers. And I'm using a seed in my random to allow for deterministic data generation from test to test. So I don't have any disparity between the tests just because of the value. And then I'm going to have two benchmarks. First, a for loop on the array and the other one, a for each loop on the array. Now, keep in mind that Rider and basically many IDs will tell you to, hey, do you want me to convert this into a for each loop? We're going to see why that's interesting in a second. But first, let's just run these benchmarks. I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run benchmarks and this will be in release mode just to generate the most optimized version of the code that it can and i'm going to go ahead and press run and see what's the difference between a four and a four each loop on an array all right so results are back and let's see what we have here so as you can see four and four each on array is basically identical this is kind of within margin of error and we want to see why exactly that's the case. So to do that, I'm going to bring sharplab.io in the mix, which is a website that allows me to see how high level C sharp is being converted and compiled into low level C sharp. So first, let's take a look at how the for loop is being lowered. So as you can see, the for loop over here is being lowered into a while loop behind the scenes. Now, if we add the for each loop for the array, you're going to see that likewise, the for each loop on the array is also being lowered into a while loop. So when it comes to arrays, for and for each loop is basically identical. However, let's take a look at other stuff like lists, I enumerables, I collections, I read only lists, all those things actually behave differently. So now I'm going to add lists into the mix and I'm going to populate the list with the same items from the array, but using two lists. And I'm going to run two benchmarks, basically the same thing, for and for each loop on the list. But first I'm going to comment out the array stuff because we saw how it looks like and we don't really care about it. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see now, for each loop is twice as slow as the for loop on the list. Now, in general, both of them are also slower compared to iterating an array, but for each is twice as slow. Again, small time span. However, depending on how much data you're iterating on and how much you're using this type of thing, this can have an effect. And IDs will still try to recommend, hey, convert this to a for each loop. So if you don't know exactly what you're doing, it can have an effect. Now, what I want to do is take this and go to sharplab.io again and see why this is happening. So back to Sharplab, and I'm going to start with the for loop on the list again. And as you can see, the for loop is still being lowered to a while loop. It's, it's exactly the same as before. However, when I bring the for each loop into the mix, then watch what happens. The for each loop now will actually be lowered to grabbing the enumerator from the get enumerator method and then using the enumerator in a while loop and then calling the move next to move to the next item of the enumerator and get the current value and work with it. And then all of that is trapped into a try finally and then we're disposing the enumerator as well. So there's a lot more going on behind the scenes and that's why it is slower. Now, what I want to do is take all that, including the arrays actually, and run this benchmark against both .NET 6 and .NET 7. To do that, all I'm going to do is add a simple job net 60 attribute and then a net 70 as well. And that's going to run the benchmark first for .NET 6 and then for .NET 7. And I don't really need to do anything else. Benchmark.NET will do the rest for me. So let's go ahead and let this run 
and see what the difference now looks like. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So first, let's state the obvious, the for loop on the array and the for each loop on the array for both .NET 6 and .NET 7 are basically identical. Nothing has really changed. However, as you can see now in .NET 7, for loop on list and for each loop on list are basically the same. This is within margin of error again. So we went from for each being twice as fast to both of them being equal. However, and I don't know if you noticed it, yes, the for each loop on a list went from 633 to 426, so optimization on top of parity with for each, but the for loop on a list went from 320 to 422. So we have performance degradation between .NET 6 and .NET 7 when it comes down to for loops on things that use this enumerator approach. Now, what I would like to see is understand exactly why this is happening. How did they manage to make this perform the same, even though one has to use the enumerator and the other one seemingly doesn't? Now, SharpLab won't really be of any use here. However, what I can do is comment out the array stuff because I don't really care about the array stuff in this case. But if I build the project as it is and open the IL viewer and copy how basically this code will be compiled into the intermediate language that the CLR will pick up and run, then I'm going to add this into a diff window and I'm going to put .NET 6 on the left. And then I'm going to go back to the CS project and change this to a .NET 7 project and then clean and build the solution and try to grab the code that .NET 7 will generate for the CLR. So I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and copy the IL and I'm going to paste it here. And as you can see, there is actually no difference other than one is .NET 6, the other one is .NET 7. Both release mode, basically the same thing, no IL difference. It's compiled to the same thing. So still we have effectively the same difference in the code generated. One is a while loop, the other one is using the enumerator. So this makes me think that the optimization is actually on the JIT level. So the JIT compiler is optimizing during runtime and it brings performance parity between the two approaches. However, I also think that for this to be optimized and the same as the for loop, they kind of had to degrade the performance on the for loop in some way. So what does that mean for you? Well, you can use a for and a for each loop on lists without any fear. You don't have to worry about using your IDEs feature to optimize this specific scenario. However, know that yes, the performance is decreased on for loops on those things compared to .NET 6. And I did scan through Stephen Taub's performance improvements in .NET 6 blog, and I did not find any explicit mention of this exact degradation. So, I mean, I guess the thing is called performance improvement, so they probably wouldn't talk about it, but it looks like, yes, we did have this performance degradation in the process. But what do you think? Do you think this is justified, especially for getting parity between the two approaches of doing a loop? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this, turning the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.